All right, so if you notice I'm up here. Uh, when Ross was asking me about this, he said, hey, you want to preach next Sunday? I said, well, sure, where are you going? He says, I'm actually going to be in children's church. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll do that. Then as I was thinking last night and this morning, you know, I've been in children's church when Ross is preaching. And usually that's when I'm back there is when he goes long-winded. So we might just, I'm not saying it's going to be long-winded. I usually don't preach that long. But I might stretch it out just just so uh, Ross can fill what everybody else fills every once in a while. Back there. When you look at that clock and you're like, man, these kids are bouncing off the wall. We've done everything we're supposed to do. And he's still not done. That's, you know, that's usually the 1220 service. Sometimes I wonder if he started a second service. And then I just think he's probably going back here. He goes on back here. So bear with me. You, as you noticed, we've had a few issues. Satan's really trying to, Satan's obviously trying to do something. I'm, I'm going to blame everything. We've had, we've had printer problems. We've had, you name it, we've had issues this morning. And I, I have to stay firm on the fact that Satan's trying to stop what's going to go on. So it's not because I'm preaching, I promise you. So uh, if you're new here, don't let that hold you back. Ross will be back next week, so don't don't judge our church by me. <laughs> so I was thinking, I took this week off, so that was another reason why I thought, well, it wouldn't be too bad if I preached. I have the time. I don't, I don't have a good excuse not to. I took it off, and I did a little bit of yard work. How many of you guys have been doing some yard work? It's like summer has not ended. It was 80 degrees yesterday. It's going to be 80 again today, and it's... It's deer season, so it's supposed to be cold. But then I was thinking, you know, life is full of these different seasons. You know, there's the regular four seasons. We don't really experience much of those in Oklahoma. But, you know, and then I, even spiritually, there's there's dormant seasons. There's times where we rest. There's times where we, we grow. You know, and I was thinking as I was doing my yard work that our plants, our stuff like that, goes through those same kind of seasons. And uh, if you've ever seen my yard work, it's not the prettiest. I'm kind of a get it done. If I get a chainsaw in my hand, things are, things are serious. So this week I got serious. I pulled my chainsaw out. I took out some, some ugly bushes that have been driving me nuts for the last eight years at the house. And I finally, I've been talking about it. And my wife said, you know, that'd be okay if you did that. Well, guess what? They're gone. No turning back. But I've also learned, and you probably have too, when you don't do that spruce up, when you don't do that upkeep, things kind of get out of hand. Weird things grow, things you didn't expect to grow, grow. You know, this year with all the rain, we've had a lot of weeds that just wouldn't die. I mean, not even Roundup could touch them. So that's kind of where I'm going to focus on. Uh, if you've got a Bible, if you want to go ahead and turn to John chapter 15. If you don't have one, there's one underneath you. If you don't have one at home, please take that. Take that Bible that's underneath you. That's our gift to you. But in John chapter 15, starting in verse 1, it says, I am the true vine. And my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch branches can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am a vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he, like a branch that is thrown away and withers, such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now, obviously, he's talking to the disciples here. 
But he's also talking to us. If we are in Christ, we are connected to we are connected to the vine. So part of that's talking to us too. Uh, there's times in all our lives, I'm sure we can all attest to that, that there's some things in our lives that need a little pruning, a little upkeep, and then there's some things in our lives that we just need to completely remove from the roots. See, there's things in our lives that if we don't keep in check, then they get out of hand. You know, the whole reason for pruning is to promote better growth. And then again, there's just times where you've just got to completely remove those things that aren't producing. See, in 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And then in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so e easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. See, I know in the scripture of John, it talks about God being the gardener, Jesus being the vine, and he's really talking about us as followers. But I think we also need to look, use that same scripture and look at our lives. And if anything gets out of hand, if it goes unkept, especially vines, what happens? They start surrounding everything. They start entangling things. So take a look at your life. There's probably some things that entangle you. There's probably some sin, some addictions. There's maybe even peoples or habits. There's things that if you don't keep those things in check, you don't tend to them, they're going to cause you to stumble. They're going to tangle up and they're going to trip you. See, in pruning, it doesn't always mean that it's going to be bad stuff. If you, read, if you remember in the scripture we just read in John, it says that uh, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. So pruning doesn't always mean bad things. But oftentimes it's areas in our life we need to spend a little more time improving so that it produces better. So if we don't identify those problems, whether they need to be removed or pruned, if we don't identify those things in our life early or in your garden, however you need to hear it, if you don't identify the troubled areas early, they're going to cause a problem. Things are going to get out of hand pretty quickly. You know, God will usually show us the areas we need to trim in our lives. He'll show us the areas we need to cut off. Matter of fact, if, uh, if you come on Wednesday nights, if you come to the men's Bible study, you'll know we've been doing a lot of Bible studies talking about idols. Uh, even when Ross preached to the youth the other night, it's idle. So that had me thinking. There's a reason why idolatry keeps popping up. Because idolatry is something that we always put before God. That's always something that's going to, if we don't keep it in check, it gets out of hand. So I, I stand firm on the fact that there's a good reason why idolatry has been coming up in a lot of our Bible studies lately. Because that's something in our areas we need to keep checked. So when you're trimming bushes, first thing you you got to decide that you're going to do some trimming. You got to decide you're going to do some pruning. I mean, in my mind, I thought, yeah, I'm going to cut this thing out. But I've been planning on cutting those bushes for a while. And guess what? It wasn't until this week that I finally did it. But then once you decide you're going to do some work, do some sprucing up. You've got to decide, you've got to get the right tools. I had to wrestle this out of my son's hands this morning because he knew what it was. But this little thing right here, this goes in my hunting bag. This is one of my most important tools when I'm out in the woods. In it, it's got a nice little uh, fold up saw, and it's also got pretty handy pruning shears. See, the, 
the things I use these for is usually when I'm setting up in the woods. I don't need anything. There's limbs, there's vines, there's, there's junk in the way that will cause my shot to ricochet. The things that I'm aiming for, if I don't clear the stuff in front of them, then those things are going to cause my aim, my shot to go off. If you've ever gone hunting, if you've ever shot a bow, if you've ever shot, it takes the slightest little thing to throw off your shot. So I always keep those with me in case, and I always want to clear a path. I know where I'm going to aim at, and I want to make sure before it's time to take the shot that my path is already clear. Before it's time to make that harvest, I want to make sure there's nothing in my way. So it's the same thing when we're doing yard work, whatever it is, when we're cleaning up our lives, we've got to have the right tools. And the good news for those that are in Christ, we have the right tools. We've got the Word of God. We've got the Holy Spirit. And I just said in John chapter 15 that we have the best gardener. He said, God, my Father is the gardener. So I believe, however, that He's going to show us some things that we need to tend to ourselves. We can't expect God to take care of everything. A lot of times, if you've ever had some struggles in your life, God will show you things. But He also, and I've heard Ross preach on it, that God's always going to do His part, so we've got to do our part. So there's some times that we've got to take the pruning and the cutting in our own hands. And I already mentioned that sometimes pruning can be painful. And it's not just painful for us. I promise you, every time God is trimming on us, every time He's punishing us, it's hurting Him. And things don't usually come out looking very pretty when they're pruned. If you've ever seen a bush that's pruned, uh, unless you're Edward Scissorhands, how many of you know Edward Scissorhands? I just wanted to see how old you guys were. And what you know, he always he did the uh, the head sculpture. So if you don't know Edward Scissorhands, get on Netflix and watch it. It's an oldie but a goodie. So other than that, things don't always look pretty when they're pruned. But like I said earlier, the, the pruning is to promote future growth and future production. So it may look ugly for a little while, but give it time. It's going to get prettier. Some other tools that we can use to tend to our lives is one, we've got to surround ourselves with brothers and sisters that are going to help. Teach and brothers and sisters that are going to encourage us. We've got to set some goals in our life so that we can compare those things to it. We've got to create some spiritual disciplines, which are probably the best tools for clearing overburden in our lives. And some of the spiritual disciplines, it could be prayer, it could be scripture reading, scripture memorization, because those are different. It's one thing to read it. It's another thing. It says to hide my words in your heart. So that means to memorize scripture. It was a few weeks ago that we talked about putting on the armor. And it talked about the sword, which is the word of God. And that's, that's what we're going to use in combat. If you notice that list of things that we were putting on as our spiritual armor, those were all defensive until you got to the sword. The sword is what we're going to take offense with. So we've got to hide those words in our heart. We've got to read the word and memorize the word. We've got to spend time worshiping God. We've got to spend time serving God and others. You know, sometimes God's going to call you to do some fasting. It's amazing what happens when you do a spiritual fast. You know, another spiritual discipline could be giving. Confession. That doesn't mean you've got to confess to your brothers. It says confess to one another. But make sure you're confessing your sin to God. And then fellowship. And I don't mean dinners. I mean spending time with other followers of Christ. If you're looking back at your life, you're thinking, man, there's some stuff that I probably do. But I'm having trouble separating what's good and what's bad. I learned a long time ago when I started planting a little garden that a lot of stuff looks the same when it first sprouts up, right? 
even when even knowing I do some little starter plants and I plant squash and cucumbers and you know tomatoes and when they all first sprout they look pretty similar the same thing with weeds weeds will look a little similar to some of the other stuff but a lot of plants look the same when they first sprout so what we've got to do not only compare those to the more mature plants but when things are sprouting up in our life we've got to compare it to the Word of God if it doesn't line up with what the Bible says because you've developed that spiritual discipline right of reading your Bible and praying so if it doesn't line up with what you're reading and what you're praying about then the odds are that's probably something that either needs to cut out or it needs pruning. see Galatians chapter 5 starting at verse 19 it says the acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I do before, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the, the, fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. <coughs> So you can take those two lists and you can look at your life and if this list is outweighing this list, if those things that he says they shouldn't be so are ranking higher in your life or kind of taking over, guess what? Those are probably things that you need to cut out. Those things that said the fruit of the, the fruit of the spirit, the joy, the peace, the patience, those are probably things that need to be pruned. Those need to be focused on and built up. They need to be trimmed up so that they can produce a little better. And then I'll stick with my yard working little thing here. Because once you get all that cleaned up, you want to keep it nice, right? You know what I've learned is if you do a little prevention ahead of time, then the next time it comes to pruning and cleaning out, it's not so hard. So we got to do some weed prevention. See, I know with gardeners, and I've yet to, to do it because they did it in my flower beds, and that's another story. I got black paper, trash bag looking stuff that shows up all the time. My dogs get into it. But a lot of people use those things. They use those liners. They use mulch or weed killers. In a garden, we use these things to put a barrier between the good stuff and the bad stuff. So we need to do the same thing in our lives. We need to put a barrier between the bad stuff and do stuff that encourages and promotes the good stuff. See, one way to improve is to ask yourself. If you're connected to the roots of Christ, which means have you accepted Christ? Have you given your life to God? Have you accepted the fact that Jesus came, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died bearing your sin and my sin on the cross, and then resurrecting three days later? Have you accepted that? Because that's going to be the best week of entry you can do. Because that's going to put a permanent barrier between heaven and hell. And then if you'll flip over to Romans chapter 11, this was, this is probably one of the greatest, most enjoyable scriptures I read this week. And it's chapter 11, starting in verse 17. Let's see if I get my Bible situated. This whole mic thing is kind of different. It says, again I asked, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? 
Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means, but if their transgression means riches for the world, and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their fullness bring? Oh, I think I started a little off. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens when you got the mic and you're trying to sit you with everything. Sorry. That was good scripture too, but that, this, this is what I was talking about. Starting in verse 17. It says, that Some of the branches have been broken off, and you thought, a, and though a wild olive shoot have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not boast over these branches if you do consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will not be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut off an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, <coughs> How much more readily will these natural branches be grafted into their own olive trees? <coughs> I know a lot of that scripture talks about how, you know, originally in the Old Testament, the Israelites, the Jews, were God's cho chosen people. But because of Christ, the, us, the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, we are grafted in to the roots. We're grafted into Christ because of Jesus. Now, I don't know how many of you know much about grafting. I don't know if they practice it as much as they used to. But I know out at my stepdad's place, his dad was a, I mean, magnificent gardener, grower. And you can walk around their property, and it just amazes me every time I see it. Because he had got pecan trees all over the place. And if you look at some of these pecan trees, they've got bases that are probably this big, about this high up, and then it goes to the smaller tree. Sometimes the bark looks different. What they've done is he has grafted these trees together. He's taken either a sick tree or maybe something that wasn't producing very well, and then he literally took a green little sprout off of another tree that might have been, I mean, for pecan's sake, it might have been producing pecans that were the size of golf balls. So he took that. And if you do it all right, you shave it a little bit of off the root, then or off the base, you shave a little off the sprout, you kind of take them together. And I mean, the theory behind it is that if you do it right, that solid root system that's already been established will recognize that little shoot as being part of it and it'll cause it to grow. It'll start feeding it. You know, they do the same thing with skin grafts and where they take something, they grow it elsewhere and then they reapply it. But if you ever walked around a place and had grafted trees, it, it's something that you just, you just should experience. I mean, if, if you enjoy the outdoors like I do, it's amazing that they can take a sprout this big and connect it to a root that was already established. See, grafting a tree is taking what could be a great producer, giving it an established root from a tree that may not have been producing. It could have been broken or damaged. So, if you're not in Christ, then let him take you from that wild shoot that just sprouted up. Maybe you were, as when they talk about the soils, you were planted in some shallow soil. Let God take you and graft you to his roots, to his vine. Because 
once you get grafted to the vine of the Son of God, then, I mean, that's, that's where all life flows from. In other words, we've got to add more good stuff to our, our lives, to our gardens, to make them, make the bad stuff a little harder to grow. I mean, you can use the same effect that the weeds use on your garden. If you choke out the weeds with good stuff, then that leaves the bad stuff no room to grow. See, an unkept yard or garden usually becomes overrun with things that we don't want growing. Weeds, grass, vines, wild trees, it doesn't matter. And an unkept life will be taken over by the things that entangle and choke us out. Galatians chapter 5, which I was there a minute ago. Just before what we read earlier, starting in verse 13. It says, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. See, we can keep on growing wild, or we can establish ourselves into the root of the living tree. It says that we were given freedom in Christ. That doesn't mean freedom to do whatever we want to. There's other scripture that says, what do I do? Shall I just keep on sinning? Because we're covered by grace, right? We got our get out of hell free card, and we can do whatever we want to. But that shouldn't be so. It says we were given freedom, but that's freedom. We need to we need, we need to enjoy the freedom. Don't take the freedom for granted. The freedom you have in Christ, don't take it for granted. Don't fill your life with a bunch of garbage. If you've got a bunch of garbage in your life right now, it's probably time you start doing some sprucing up. You need to trim and prune the areas in your life that are good so they get better. And you need to either cut off some of the stuff, whether it's drugs, whether it's other addictions, whether it's people in your life, you need to cut those off. You need to cut them off at the root. Because if you leave a root, the odds are that that tree is going to grow again. If you leave a stump without putting any kind of a killer on it, it's going to sprout again. So you need to take those things and what needs to be removed and cut out, you need to cut out completely. Don't just transplant it. Don't just leave it there and think, well, I know I didn't plant anything there, but let's just kind of see what it looks like when it grows a little bigger. Let's see what that is. See, if you've ever seen a sidewalk or even your yard or your garden, whatever it is, it's pretty quick to notice that conditions don't have to be very perfect for bad stuff to grow, right? I mean, I've seen grass grow out of the smallest crack in the concrete. If it just gets a little bit of dirt, it establishes itself. But if the conditions are ideal, then the garden is going to exceed the expectations of the one who planted it. So if you take a little bit of time beforehand, do a little bit of upkeep in your life, then I promise you God's going to use you to produce some mighty fine fruit. Because that's what he says. He prunes us so that we produce good fruit. So I want you to think about it. And I told you this morning that it, God wasn't going to work because of me. I promise you. But Satan wouldn't be trying so hard to interfere with what's going on here this morning if God wasn't trying to do something in your life. He's probably already revealed to you. As soon as I started reading, you probably put one and two together. 
as soon as I started reading, pruning, cutting things off, there's some stuff in your life you need to prune. There's some stuff in your life you need to cut out. And it needs to start right now. Don't say, well, I'll do it later. I could have gone all this week thinking about cutting that, those bushes out. But it wasn't until I took action that it got done. The same thing this can be said about your life. You need to take some action today, right now. If you are a wild sprout, you need to give your life to Christ. You need to let him graft you to the vine that brings all life. If you're kind of growing out of hand, if your life's looking kind of rough right now, you need to trim it up a little bit. Like I said, it's going to hurt sometimes. Pruning hurts. But all oh, the way it looks after it's done. After you give it time to grow again and improve. I promise you. If you take care of the things that need to